Hi guys and welcome to a new section where we are going to talk about the more advanced topics in Python and in this section uh, you will get more ideas on what to specialize in and first we are just going to have some practical exercises a couple of them uh, first one is uh, handling exceptions in Python this is also known as error handling and uh, we have put this in the advanced uh, section because here we get more into the um, custom error handling in Python. So we have already talked about the try, accept, finally uh, construct. So Python is an interpreted language, which means that there is no compiler to compile your code and find any logic or syntax error before you run it. So how does Python handle this? Python uses exceptions to handle errors. Uh, this type of handling can mean that making one small mistake in your code can cause your entire program to fail. Because of this, uh, you want to test thoroughly. But on top of that, you also want to set up some fail safes in case you encounter exceptions. With your code during runtime so in example let's just try a simple uh, function and if we try to sum it with wrong value it says you get a type error we can't convert int object to string implicitly so as you can see when we try to pass a string to a mathematic function which can only operate on integers and floats it throws a type error this tells us that the data we sent to the function is not of the correct type because python is not a strongly typed language nor is it compiled the only errors that uh, we will get are exceptions which will crop up and at runtime when an exception is thrown at runtime you, your entire program will quit if there is no exception handling in place it is imperative that you check for these sorts of gotchas. Not checking for them can render your code unusable, and that's not a very good code base to have. So let's just uh, look at the documentation, Python documentation. And if you search for built-in exceptions, Python, and you go to your version of uh, Python and and the, a number of exceptions are built into Python language so if you go at the bottom exception hierarchy you will find all the uh, there's a list of uh, exceptions so quite a few of them so have a look at them so with so much that can go wrong So how do we gracefully handle exceptions in Python? And like I said, we use the try accept block. The try accept block will try a piece of code. And if the code throws one of the preceding except exceptions, it will catch that exception and print out an error message as defined in the base exception class or you can even print your own error messages for each exception and we can try a small example
So this is a custom message for for the type error. So you can also have try accept blocks handle exceptions so that your program doesn't fail and you can continue try moving down the stack. You can do that by this. So I'm just giving you some uh, pseudocode here. This is so just to illustrate how how to Uh, handle exception so that your program doesn't fail and you want to continue moving down the stack so this is not a uh, something that will uh, run at all it was just for illustration purposes so sometimes you will want to run a function no matter if you if your try catch catches an exception or runs and in that case we'll want to use um, the finally statement so I'll just give this an example in notepad it's because so it does so I don't confuse you to illustrate it here So finally would go here. So this is another pseudo code. So but what if you want your code to throw its own exceptions? What if you want to check for some certain type of data? And if that, that is not present, you want to alert the user. So you can make exception classes to use on top of built-ins. So let's try to create our own custom exception class in Python. Just start your interpreter and create a new file. Be a Python file. We call it accept class. Let me make this. Bigger.
So this is just a boiler uh, boiler um, plate uh, code. So this is where we start off. So now we're going to write the exception that uh, we'll throw throw if self dot number isn't a number. The first step to writing an exception is that it must be a class that inherits from the exception class. So let's add some code to our uh, accept class.py file. So here we have created our own customized, customized exception that will be thrown if the number attribute is uh, is not in fact a number. We've also overridden the underscore underscore init underscore underscore function for the exception class, and rather than using args, we are going to use value to catch the value that raise, raised the exception. We are also overriding the str method to output the self.value property using the reper method call, which will give us the correct representation of the value that raised the exception. And this is what will be printed out with our exception error message. Uh, next, we will change our return underscore values method. Uh, into something that can check whether self dot number is an integer an int if the type of self dot number isn't an int or integer you will want to raise our exception so let's implement a very simple if else statement to check in our try catch uh, block so if we just remove this, we'll do a try. Explain in a minute. C 
So what we are doing here is that is a simple check on the type of self.name. If it's not an int, we are raising the exception we defined earlier. Should the self.number property actually be an int, we'll simply return a string that tells us the type of each property of our instance. If the type is not an int, not a number, will be raised and we'll pass in self.number to be evaluated and output in our error message. So let's try to run this. First we have to save it. So when we use the I flag and so when we use the I flag when starting a Python interpreter, we can pass in a Python file and this imports the file we are passed in without having to explicitly import in the interpreter. So this means you have both classes we have defined in our example class.py and we don't have to namespace them with, with them with example class dot something. We can simply call things. So next let's create a new instance of our test class and pass it to strings rather than a string and an integer. Sorry, I just realized I have written <coughs> these statements a little bit in the wrong uh, It has to be like this. Save it. Still. So just a note, when, uh, when I corrected the the values here we, you just have to quit uh, the Python integrator and Im start it again because then it, it imports the new values updated code so that's why it's throwing uh, the uh, error so now we have created an instance of our test class and doing typos and doing mistakes is part of, of being a developer so I'm not editing out anything I'm taking all the the mistakes and I'm and, and I'm commenting them back so that you understand what what went wrong so now let let's call return values on our newly created instance and let's note the, the output
so the try except worked and caught that you were passing in a string rather than an integer so let's create another instance and pass it in a string and an integer then call the return underscore values on that instance Uh, another typo is that uh, in this return value the, uh, function it should be type self dot number is int we are checking the, uh, the second value here the number so that's why it didn't work in the last uh, example so say uh, change this to self dot number and save it and import it with this once again with this uh, statement and let's create an, uh, an instance and string 2 must be an integer let's try it with another example and now it gives us what we are looking for so we pass in a string and in it integer and then call the return values on that instance and we note the output so when we create an exception class we're really creating a subclass from the base exception class that is built into python uh, with this you have control over how our own customized exceptions will behave when they are raised we create a very simple class and we saw that when the exception was raised our class will give feedback to the user as to what type of data was passed into our class so as you can see, this feature can be incredibly powerful when writing larger projects. Hopefully this has given you enough to offer a glimpse into the formulation of exceptions that you can write your own should the need arise. So this is for this lesson and I will meet again in the next lesson. Okay, see you.